How do I come up with personal projects to work on in cybersecurity? In today's video, I'm gonna outline why you should be working on a side project right now. And really the three things that I look for uh, when I'm brainstorming for my next cybersecurity project. Let's get started. Hello everyone, my name is Grant Collins. I am a aspiring cybersecurity professional. I'm a cybersecurity student right now, looking to help you uh, get into the security world, the security industry. Right now I am, uh, I'm outside somehow. I'm outside and uh, it's a beautiful day out here. It's a nice spring day and no longer tethered down by the, the, dorm, the dorm life or the, uh, the gray weather. So anyway, how do I address the side projects? Uh, so first off, I'm gonna tell you three reasons why you should be working on a side project right now. First one uh, and the, probably the most critical one is applying what you are learning. We can go and we can learn every single, on, we can go to any online course, we can take our notes, we can uh, maybe do the learning checks or like the quizzes, we can um, you know, go binge watch a whole bunch of courses. But if you don't apply what you're learning, you're never gonna really truly understand the concept. I found that when I've actually applied maybe to a project, I actually am able to understand the concepts over just memorizing content. Number two is a great benefit of your application. Employers, at least in my perspective, like to see people who are able to apply themselves. They're not just getting in the, going in the classroom or going on online courses or getting the certifications, but they're applying what they're learning and they're actually utilizing the information to, towards their ability or towards their advantage. Uh, and so the, the, the second one is building this portfolio of work. Uh, eventually, after a certain amount of time, and if you do it right, uh, your side projects can become really a big portfolio of work, which you can throw on a resume, you can throw on a website, and then you can throw that on your resume and you can show what you've been able to do. Employers like to see this because, well, not, not only now are you maybe getting your degree, certification, or you're taking online courses, but you're actually showing that you know what you're doing because you're applying yourself. So you're building that portfolio of work. Number three is gaining credibility. Basically, you're able to demonstrate the ability to do something. We can say all the time, we can say we have the blank certification or we have a degree in cybersecurity or whatever it is. But if you can't actually show like what you've learned and apply that, again, it comes back to the application piece, you're really not really showing your credibility. Yeah, sure, there's credibility behind a degree in and in a certification in and of itself, but showing that is so important. And I think that uh, you can do that and you can enhance your credibility. So hopefully those three reasons give you uh, some inclination to actually start on a side project. And that can be anything within the security realm. Uh, getting started is super important. How do I exactly brainstorm my ideas? You know, what am I exactly using uh, as an outline or as a reference to get these side projects going. Right now, I'm currently under the Python for cybersecurity. So I'm learning programming, but really I'm trying to learn programming geared towards cybersecurity. And really, I'm not really trying to learn programming of itself, but more of the scripting side. And so how do I brainstorm these ideas? I'll give you three, kind of the three structures, the three outlines that I use. So first, I assess the areas within the IT domains that I am uh, interested in. You know, so where do I lack knowledge and where am I interested in? So right now, to give you the examples, keep on this example, I was lacking in programming. Sure, I've worked with programming before, but uh, having the ability to continually expand and understand the logic behind uh, more advanced programs is kind of what I'm getting at with this project. So where do I lack knowledge and where, what domain or what area am I interested in? That's kind of the first thing I do. In addition, I try to keep in mind the fundamentals. I did it right. See, I did it right. See if I fundamentals, 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 fundamental, 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 keeping in mind those fundamentals, fundamental. Uh, as a student, I think it's super important. We get maybe too, too ahead of ourselves. Uh, we think that we can just get right into the security side of things. But if we don't understand the fundamentals behind why, why those security controls are in place, 
I mean, you're not really gonna understand it. So I try to keep those fundamentals in mind for every single project I do. And I do some initial research. This can just be some simple Google searches online. I'm looking at some projects uh, that other people have done, maybe some ideas, some blog posts, things like that to uh, start enhancing my knowledge. This expands uh, onto my second point, which is I start to really uh, dig into the research phase. And I do this by looking mostly at projects online. Uh, I reference Google uh, the, for the first parts, uh, then I get on GitHub, I see what uh, kinds of projects students or individuals have done on there. And I'm also looking at blogs, articles, and YouTube, looking at different projects that people have done. I'm keeping in mind that uh, I want to add a, my own little personal twist or uniqueness to the, uh, to the project. So I'm just kind of seeing what other people have done, getting a basic structure, a basic outline. Once I get to this idea, uh, I have a Google Documents or a Google Docs where I just kind of write down the project that I'm seeing. And the next thing I do is I put my personal spin, my personal twist on it. I add maybe a little bit more uh, of this, of X, whatever that may be and I go ahead and subtract some things. And then third is structuring that outline. I have referenced this now a few times. You can see in my description below on my complete Python project or uh, on my Security Plus, I give myself an outline. It's so important to give yourself an outline, to give yourself that clarity right when you're starting. Instead of just going in right into a course, not knowing really, really where you're gonna go next, get that outline started. And that can always change, but having that clarity in mind is, is really important. So I, um, within this outline, I, I asked myself, what resources will I be using? Will I be using paid or lear uh, free learning resources? Will I be using my Pluralsight subscription? Will I be using whatever that may be? So I asked myself, you know, what am I using in terms of resources? How will I go about studying? Uh, will I be doing three Pomodori, five Pomodori a day? I've done a video here that will link to the cards that explains Pomodori technique. What am I doing exactly uh, in terms of uh, tracking the progress of this project? And how will I start and execute? You know, is this gonna start with a, a course or is it gonna start right into a project? Having an outline is important and it really it just gives you that clarity. Those are the three building blocks, the three main ways I am able to structure my personal projects within cybersecurity. I hope you found today's video helpful. If you did, consider subscribing. And I will see you in the next one.